does Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan go, so goes Senator John McCain, or so the theory goes. McCain's support of the surge in Iraq and his tough stance against Iran could help him if violence in Iraq remains relatively low and if the Iranians continue to saber rattle. Then again, now that attacks are up in Afghanistan and the Iraqi government is asking the United States to set a date for withdrawal, could McCain's strategy backfire between now and November? Again, as we wait for President Bush, Bernard Whitman is a Democratic strategist and Andrea Tantaros is a Republican strategist. And Andrea McCain was asked about the Iraqi government uh, asking the U.S. for a timetable for withdrawal and here's what John McCain said. Well, we don't uh, we don't have that soundbite, but essentially, um, John McCain. Well, do we do we have the soundbite of John McCain? As the president and the foreign minister both told me in the last several days, that they uh, it will be directly related to the situation on the ground, just as they've always said. And since we are succeeding, then uh, I am convinced, as I've said before, we can withdraw and withdraw with honor, not according to a set timetable. And I'm confident that's what Prime Minister Maliki is talking about. So again, there's John McCain saying that this all, of course, depends on the situation on the ground, and that's what Maliki is referring to. Uh, Andrea, President Bush said last year that if the Iraqis asked us to leave, we would leave. Are McCain's chances of winning the presidency tied solely to events on the ground in Iraq? No, I don't think they're tied solely to the events in Iraq, but they're definitely very close. I mean, he's married his candidacy to this war. He's already said success in, uh, in Iraq uh, will affect his candidacy. And, you know, he stuck his neck out when it wasn't politically expedient. He bucked the Bush administration and pushed for the serve. And we've seen the surge work, which I think is going to help benefit uh, John McCain. I think also now... As we see North Korea in the news, we see Iran in the news, the stakes seem to be getting higher and higher every day. This is becoming not just an economy election, but an everything election. And I think as we see the stakes get higher, people start to get nervous. People may want, voters may start to decide, instead of change, they want change and they want experience. And so that's going to be up to John McCain to articulate that he is the candidate of change as well and experience. Bernard, would you agree? Uh, well, I, look, I think I would agree with Barack Obama, who has basically said that we have been outsourcing our foreign policy on Iran to the Europeans. And Barack Obama has called for a coherent, consistent, constructive strategy when dealing with Iran. We have had no engagement with them uh, for the last several years politically. And at the same time, our trade with Iran has gone up tenfold over uh, the past few years under the Bush administration. And I think that sends well, very mixed signals. And we need a leadership on this issue. And John McCain's idea of leadership in dealing with Iran is to make jokes. I mean, the most recent joke about American cigarettes being used to kill Iranians is just not the sort of leadership that we need in an area that is probably the greatest uh, potential tinderbox in the world at this moment. Bernard, to say that the United States has not been involved at all with talks in Iran is blatantly false. Also, I'm not really sure what Barack Obama's position is. First, he said he'd sit down without preconditioned. Now his campaign is kind of backpedaled. He still has not told us exactly what he would talk about with Tehran. So his position, and even on the Iraq war we've seen, has evolved very dramatically. I think he needs to clarify what he actually means. And speaking of tinderboxes, Bernard, um, we're waiting President Bush talking about the FISA vote, and I just want to clarify something. I got something wrong a minute ago. In fact, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama uh, both voted against uh, one of, uh, uh, the part of the bill that would have given immunity to the telecom companies, um, but voted, I believe, in support of the overall bill. We'll have to um, clarify that. But in any case, uh, Bernard, what do you make of the FISA bill and, and, the, and the frustration that Democrats now have with Barack Obama for not doing what the left wanted, and that is voting against FISA as opposed to voting for FISA, which he did today? Well, I think the majority of Americans support the aspect of the FISA bill, which allows for us to deal properly with potential terrorists in this country. But many Democrats, myself included, uh, did not want to give wholesale immunity to the telecom industry. I think this sets a dangerous precedent, and I think that uh, Senators, McCain, Senators Obama and Clinton were right in voting against that portion of the bill. All right. Um, Bernard Whitman, a Democratic strategist. Andrea Tantaros, a Republican strategist. Uh, we appreciate you coming on and, uh, and helping us again. We're waiting for President Bush to come out. We expect sometime, perhaps maybe in the next uh, 20 or 25 minutes.